All right, bell curve free will. A professor of science uh, published this thing. There's a given possibility of observation of my given choice, but then if my determined levels of neuronal firing and ultimately opportunities and situations and learned experiences and education and blah, 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 effectively makes it such that I think and and or do this means I have determined. But it's like, no, you observe eventually self-aware and contextual situational environmental factors such that you can ultimately choose to make a different choice. Now, some here will understand that that is not the case for everyone. Not everyone can do that perfectly or to the same level and extent of others. A Down syndrome individual does not magic up a massive intelligence. So their free will choice is less free will to more free will. There's more free will for some and less free will for other. More determinism for some and less determinism for others. Essentially, my camp is blah, 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 and it's the only way. I'm like, no, stupid cunt, it's not. You're fucking retard idiot again. You're powering through this idea that you needed to be this way when it's not. Realistic is all. You want to do the psychology then? Black and white. That's what you're doing to your little camp. It has to be black and white. Only this thing. When it's not realistic and it's in no way indicative of the truth. The truth is, accurately speaking, there's a bell curve. You guys are fucking stupid. How come you don't see that? I need to argue more for this. I need to argue more for that. Well, you know, based upon this input of various fucking stupid chemicals that I need for nutrition and this given type of input of initial data set values of memories and experiences in my environment for nurture and my DNA resultive rate expressions happen to change over time and then, and then, and then until eventually this and then I put in practice over time even though it is difficult to do this thing I do not want to do. Eventually I'll get better, but sometimes you'll never be able to get past a certain point. Right? So it's like, effectively, yes, you're quite determined and you're quite very weighted to do certain activities and decisions. But you also have a choice. Which effectively means your free will is still existent. You just have to observe your free will's choices in any given moment, for any given decision, for what it is you wish and or do not wish to occur, which means you made a choice to accept certain negative consequences, which means you are 100% responsible for your actions and decisions to a point at which context and situation comes in and it says, mm, yeah, but I, uh, you know, kind of have to admit that you couldn't have done that or thought that or known that or we're going to be likely to do that because everybody has those moments of fucking, I didn't make a good choice because it's like, I'm tired or I'm lonely or I'm blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, no, that shouldn't be allowed. And it's like, be human for once. Be empathetic and sympathetic. That's all that really is for the determinism guy. Just be fucking a human with sympathy and empathy. That's all that really is. Like, okay, so, like, well, you know, it's like, it's like, you don't do that? Yeah, but it results in, you don't do that. Well, yeah, I know, you do. No, I asked you if you did. Yes. Yes, I do. Right, but this given one is so much worse. It would have been you, at some point, if it had ever gotten that bad, and you had that type of brain, which you are not the same as that. Don't compare yourself. A law set up for this person that you are will never be acceptable for this person because it makes no sense to do it. Because, of course, it wouldn't make sense. You're fucking fuck-ups. These big brains. Look at me, my big brain. Oh, I'm so big brain. <laughs> Stupid. All right, there you go. Belker free will. All right, I figured I'd resume this. I uh, I've ended the recording. A little bit earlier but it's like this is what the definition of like the fluid pressure thermodynamic uh, dynamics are about okay if you look at it in a bell curve analysis it's like yes no there's this majority but within that majority there are variations which means that in these given 
nurture environmental variations and variables that ends up creating a cloud which is a bubble and then there's a several multitude of pressure here increased density there movement there so on right and that's literally the definition of the bell curve but we're also now talking about quantum field fluid theories with thermal dynamics that i use for neural network basis for predictive analysis with string theories so it's like just do that just think about all of society like that now every person around you is that similar ish as this kind of base rough foundation, the toolkit then got modified like that, and the datas are then inputted like this. This creates this given with these laws, morals, values, situational context, nurture stuff. These given changes to you versus me. Then likely they're going to do these things most often than not, and these given types of feelings will be elicited and will be there as a result of these given influences to create those given types of feelings, which will in increase or decrease different decision and action choices. Same thing with willingness to free will observe our given choices instead of not observe. Just do that. Bell curve free will. Everyone, it's both deterministic, but also somewhat deterministic in other ways that then have you ultimately understanding context and situation changes their given values, but also those are often seen as incalculable and so as a result turn into random noise influence, probability, quantum physics standard model mathematics which are stupid to begin with because it just means i can't tell this many different types of pressure and dynamics in this given area and so as a result i'm like nah, 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 nah. and so i'll just put a probability likelihood chance of this increased lowered resistance probability because of the increased degree of susceptibility of this given type of physics interacting this way in an entropedic manner happens to improve the chances and likelihood results of this given uh, probability and Feynman's types of designs of quantum mechanics worlds equaling this happening more often than not and within these contexts of a given basic local area it changes to this given type of increase or decrease of chance probability based upon these factors which is boring for what it's worth it's like yeah okay but it does this but because i can't see these things and i can't account for it because i'm fucking lame and i don't know how to fucking actually observe that properly i'm just gonna be all like yeah but probably like this so uncertain now heisenberg's come in and i might just, just fucking yeet that out because it's like no obviously it's not it's not uncertain in the slightest you just you can't measure things just because you're bad at something doesn't mean in any aspect or way that you're correct look guys think about the world and universe like this because we're bad at these given types of tools we use it's like, you don't have good tools when you made that. That was not your fault, Heisenberg. That's them. Them currently going like, no. <sighs> no, it doesn't work that way now. And I'm like, <sighs> okay. You remember the thermal thing I was talking about? You know, quantum foam. You can't measure quantum foam, really? You can't create a steady state resonance grid alignment with a given type of vacuum array inside of a given field network arena around a given type of anything that you are ultimately trying to measure quickly its temperature in an indirect manner for the given rate and drop over time percentage you now know the given bleed rate and input rate of any given thermal dynamic property of what it is that might be ultimately in the area 
setting it up properly, then this changes to allowing for multiple sensors in a given large enough arena. Then same thing for LIGO detection, which this could do it, and allow for multiple sources of detection. That allows for Heisenberg to be broken in an indirect manner with no longer needing to input any given source of information to ultimately be observing it. You don't need to destroy it any longer. You can indirectly observe it in such a way that you have complete, total, fucking, absolute knowledge of where something is at any given point in time. Even for the influences of the atoms, blah, whatever length that you want, fucking bullshit movement of any given electron and its spin and quark area for the given oscillation and wave field effects, the lower or small you go, it turns into something that you can do with smaller particles. Instead of a big, big thing. You want to get it to a big, big thing, and then it's like, well, statically speaking, these predicted blah, 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 means this is likely, and so then, therefore, we should see these given possibilities be more likely, right? And it's like, all right, then working forward, it turns into this given influence, which is what we have knowledge of heading and being around in this given area, then means it creates a possible pathway to totally seeing how everything is working in real time. With no need to do any Heisenberg uncertainty just because you can't measure right. But, no. Free will is in a bell curve. <laughs> sure. Things aren't possible in terms of an intrapedic, algorithmic style of puzzle piece, low resistance, then a modified resistance profile of any given local area situation that changes its probable weighted action in an intrapedic manner towards a lower energy state, creating what we view as time and space movement in a thermodynamic fluid field manner with particle soup stuff. I'm going to have to change this. But yeah, there you go. Bye. Bye. <laughs>